G'day folks, in this video we're making hose barbs for the A-series engine that's in classic minis and they look like this. These are made from 5.8 hex brass and there's a 5 second dwell I've put in to let the motor stabilise when it starts up. I'm using an aluminium insert at 3000 RPM with a feed of 0.05 per rev. I'm running this as a subroutine so the program repeats and there's a pause to advance the material and then there's the five second dwell. Here you can see this software actually allows me to specify the tool nose radius and in this case it's a 0.8. I have been asked about the length of blank I can run in the lathe and there you can see that's what it looks like a 500 long blank and I'm also using a bung to stop it vibrating. Getting a wobble on at uh, 3000 rpm could get quite nasty. This thread is a real oddity because it's tapered. It's 58 by 18 TPI, UN thread form, cut with the same sort of taper as an NPT. But they obviously work. I've made these before and uh, I had to make more of them, so they suit the job. It's a little odd because uh, although this machine will cut a tapered thread, it won't simulate a tapered thread when you simulate it it just cuts it as a straight thread. This is a standard 10mm stub drill doing its thing. It's only being fed at 0.07 per rev because the proper figure of 0.12 per rev would be making the motor slow down and speed up and slow down and speed up and it just drives me nuts. It's easier just to run it at a lesser feed. Here you can see the sharp edge that's been broken. It's not meant to be a chamfer, it just saves me messing around deburring it. I sped this up a little to stop you falling asleep. Now we get to turn the barb. There's a bit of a dwell there while the motor gets back up to 3000 RPM. See it's cutting quite nicely. I've slowed it down just there so you can see what's going on. That's turning parallel and then that's putting the long chamfer on the barb. When I had the machine just following the contour, this is what happened. It was leaving a lip. I think you can see the hollow well enough in this picture. I think all I'm doing by making the tool do a little dance is uh, removing any backlash in the system. And this is how the parts turned out with the program as written. And here we're parting off with a 1.5 wide Sumitomo parting insert. The corner radius on these inserts is 0.05. So if you try and cut anything sideways you get a relatively poor finish. As you can see there. But then it's not really made for turning sideways is it? Right, now we'll just run through the complete cycle with uh, no stops, just go all the way through. And at the end of this, I've got some microscope photographs of threads that I've cut while experimenting with this to get a good thread. Um, they're threads I cut at different speeds. All right, I'll shut up now. And as usual, I didn't part off all the way, I tapped them off so they didn't take any damage. 
I had to do a fair amount of experimentation to get this thread the way I wanted it. That's 500 RPM. Look at the chatter. That's 1500 RPM. Still a lot of chatter. And when I went to 2500 it improved no end. I was taking a lot of cuts but I was pretty happy with that result. This is the lighting setup I used for this video. At the back is a Ryobi 1800 lumen work light. In the middle is a eBay spotlight which is 12 million lumens apparently according to eBay. And the closest to the camera is an LED photographic light that I bought on eBay some time ago. I'm currently working on a tripod base for a Ryobi spotlight I have. That is 3000 lumens and that will make quite a considerable difference to how much light I can get onto the parts I'm making. And if you're still here, thanks for watching.